every now and then you gotta let her eat. So uh, you flip her over to sport, so that's a game changer. This thing, man, you put this in diff lock and that basically also stands for mountain goat mode because you can just climb anything you want to. You can feel it. I mean, it is like, it's there and it's very impressive. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Brian with Fishers Off-Road and in this video, we're gonna be covering the 2021 Yamaha RMAX 4. Now that's obviously why you're tuning in because you're interested in purchasing one or maybe you have one and just wanna get our opinion and maybe some uh, things that you don't know about the RMAX. There's a lot of stuff out there on the market. So today I'm not really gonna get into the, the specs of the RMAX. You know, there's a lot of stuff online you can research. There's a lot of other videos out there that you know what the suspension travel is and the CC and all the, the specs of it. But today we're gonna to be talking about uh, our experience with the RMAX. We've got six months of seat time in this vehicle. We've taken it on several trips and we don't like to do a review or our thoughts uh, on, on something until we get time on whatever it is we're using because uh, you know our, our ideas, opinions, thoughts change over time as we use something. We've been in the off-road industry for 25 years plus. You know, we started out in 1998 selling ATVs out of our front yard and then it just kind of went from there. We got a dealership and then we went and uh, did a television show for 20 plus years. So we've got a lot of uh, seat time in a lot of vehicles and as a matter of fact we have an off-road rental business and we have everything from Yamaha to Polaris to Can-Am so we uh, also have other vehicles that we use and work with so it's not like this is the only vehicle we know anything about and that's something you got to look at whenever you're getting feedback ideas from the general public YouTube social media you want to make sure that it's not somebody that's only owned one side by side maybe two side by sides and it was the same thing you want to try and collect as much information and data as possible so that way you can make the best decision in spending your money because let's face it today the off-road vehicles uh, are not getting any cheaper you know this vehicle right here is twenty six twenty seven thousand dollars msrp and that's without freight prep setup tax and that's if you can find one if you're on the market for an rmax especially a limited you've got the rmax 2 which is a two-seater, and then you've got the RMAX 4, which is a four-seater. Now, if you look back here, you'll notice there's no rear seats in our vehicle. That's because we just recently took a trip and we had a lot of gear that we wanted to take, so I took the rear seats out. Now, what I did was I left the bars, the braces, the brackets in that are on the seats because if you notice, there's uh, hooks uh, right here that shows you you can uh, hook your stuff, your gear down back here, because what you can do is you can slide the seats forward uh, just with a typical RMAX 4, but uh, I took them out and I left these, um, basically the frame of the seat that sits on in there so I can strap stuff down. Uh, because I also have this rear cargo box from Yamaha, so it kind of takes up the bed space that's there. So you could slide your rear seats forward and you could put more stuff up here, but uh, we had a lot of gear we were taking, so I actually took the seats out. And for me, you know, I don't use a dump bed. You know, some guys are like, well, I really need a dump bed. You know, I look at how often I use a dump bed and I don't, I just, it's just not something that I use all the time. So it wasn't important to me. Now, if you're looking for something with a dump bed, uh, the RMAX 2 does have a dump bed, but the RMAX 4 does not have a dump bed. So if that's a, a deal breaker for you, then maybe the RMAX 4 is not for you. Uh, but for me, it's a perfect fit because I can put all my gear back here when I take the seats out and everything is covered because the roof goes over everything. And then with this box back here, I can really keep stuff safe, secure, dry, because I can lock it. Um, so for us, this was just a great way to transport our gear, additional gear, or if we are taking people, I can just throw the seats back in here. It really doesn't take long to put them back in. All right, y'all, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna jump into RMAX and we're gonna take a ride and I'm gonna show you some of the benefits that the Limited has that the base model or XTR models don't have. I know a lot of times when you're looking at uh, side-by-sides on the market and the manufacturers uh, have, oh, this is a Limited and it's anywhere from a two to $5,000 price difference, but really all you get is maybe a fancier seat, maybe a little bit better suspension, tire and wheel package, bumpers, a winch. It's not really something that's 
going to make it a limited that's going to make you want to jump up to that next level but i think with the r max limited there's some things in here that you guys are going to be maybe surprised by or maybe like oh i need that or i don't need that a lot of times when you're looking at brochures or marketing stuff online or even other videos it's hard to tell uh, if you do want to take that next level jump because you don't know what it does and why it does it so we're going to take you for a ride and show you uh, the features in the limited and that maybe will help you make your decision between a base and xtr and a limited so let's jump on in and go for a ride All right, y'all, so we are uh, gonna do a little trail riding and I'm gonna show you what all this stuff does. And for me, whenever I was looking at the R-Max, I was like, ah, am I really gonna use the IQS, Intelligent Quick Switch Suspension? Uh, is that something that's important? And I can tell you right now, this right here is a game changer on our trail riding because whether we're going slow and we just want like a comfort ride or if we're picking up the pace a little bit and we want to go medium or if we're going to let this thing eat and we're going to really lay the hammer down we can put it in the firm so that way your suspension adapts to the conditions uh that you're in and the riding that you're doing i didn't think i would use it as much as i do um, but i use it a lot and then another thing i use is the d mode so you have your crawl and that's great if you are you know just trail riding maybe rock crawling you just don't need a lot of like uh power torque you know just you don't want to lay the hammer down um it's it's still the same horsepower there but it's just more linear it's a little bit easier into the throttle you don't get all of it out of the gate like you do out of sport mode uh, the crawl and trail mode are two of my favorite modes whenever it comes to riding because a lot of the trail riding we do may be a little you know off camber rough uh, even if it's like say a fire road you know you can do trail or crawl and they both work out great now if you really want to let this thing stretch its legs you put it in sport mode and i'm going to tell you something this thing does not fool around this this bad boy gets up and goes and i am super impressed with how it does in sport mode how it just immediate response you know you don't get that kind of gradual just rpm and torque and just you can feel it i mean it is like it's there and it's very impressive so that's something i use a lot um, and then on command four wheel drive, you know, with Yamaha, in my opinion, Yamaha has the best four wheel drive system on the market because you can do two wheel drive, four wheel drive and true diff lock. It's not like you have to wait for that tire to catch or the revolution and then it hits four wheel drive and it goes back and forth. This thing, man, you put this in diff lock and that basically also stands for mountain goat mode because you can just climb anything you want to so that's for me as um an off-roader from a long time ago i had jeeps growing up and you know it was just one of those things you know you get a diff lock and you know you can go through just about anything and that's that's the way this vehicle is so let's go ahead and take a ride and i'll show you how the stuff works we're going to go ahead and start out in crawl mode and two-wheel drive So you'll notice in crawl mode, it kind of starts out smoother. Uh, you can even hear it in the RPMs. Uh, you can see it in our RPMs on the Adventure Pro. Uh, when you start out, you can see it's just a, a gradual, nice, steady RPM. You know, you don't get the choppy throttle. It just feels smooth. And then uh, you can also do trail mode which is going to give you a little bit more on the rpm side and and you can feel it you know now you're getting up in uh, four or five thousand like almost pretty much immediately so for me the crawl and the trail are the two modes that i primarily live in unless you know you get out and you get the horsing around with the gang and you just you want to let her eat every now and then you got to let her eat so uh you flip her over to sports so that's a game changer
So one of the things about Yamahas is you you don't have the option of say a turf mode. So your rear is locked all the time. So when you take a corner, it's gonna be biting and you're gonna feel it biting, especially if you're on hard top. And that's gonna really help you out when you're trail riding. Uh, you can ride in two wheel drive a lot of times in a lot of places that you don't even need to put it in four wheel drive because the rear end is biting and the traction is so strong that uh, you don't have to worry about it slipping. Here on the East Coast, the R-Max, I think, is a perfect vehicle, number one, because it's not too long. Some of the, the four-seaters on the market, they're like stretch limos. And, you know, East Coast, look at this. I mean, we're tight. The trails are tight. Uh, and then you'll get like a high center situation where the vehicle will be going over a, a really, you know, pretty good size hump in the middle and your vehicle will actually get high centered and teeter totter back and forth. Well, the R-Max doesn't do that. You don't, you don't have that. It's, you know, only a few inches longer than the R-Max 2. So it's, it's a little smaller, more nimble. Uh, the suspension is better, it rides better. I just think it uh, is a much better ride. And that's one of the reasons why I went with the four-seater to get that little bit longer chassis so you have the confidence when you're out and stuff like this that uh, you're not too long. You'll notice that when you're riding, different trail situations call for different settings. And the nice thing about the R-Max 4 Limited is you can adjust all that on the fly. You know, we can adjust our comfort level, whether we want, you know, just soft, medium, firm. We can go from crawl, trail, sport. We can go uh, over here and go two wheel drive, four wheel drive, diff lock. Your four wheel drive, uh, you know, if you're going into diff lock, you definitely want to stop, put it in diff lock. And, and diff lock is really like if you're coming up against something uh, that you think you're going to need all four tires biting and grabbing, whether it's rock crawling, going through a mud hole, uh, you could be even towing something because the Yamaha R-Max 4 has a tow rating of 2,000 pounds. You can tow a lot with 2,000 pounds. come up against a situation like this and depending on your experience level uh, and what you're looking to do uh, you could you could realistically do this in two-wheel drive high not a problem and and that's actually one of the benefits to the Yamaha over all the other manufacturers on the market that are CVT uh, setups like the Yamaha Ultramatic Automatic Transmission is basically two different clutches. You have an internal clutch and you have an external clutch and that's really how Yamaha is able to give the 10-year belt warranty because the internal clutch it helps to keep the temperatures down and they've got that one-way sprag clutch so the engine braking is on point and that's another thing with your engine braking it's going to change with your drive modes whether you're in crawl, trail or sport it's going to change your engine braking. So it's not a one size fits all with the engine braking. It depends how you want to use it and what trail conditions you're in, uh, how you want the engine braking to handle. Obviously, when you're in sport mode, you don't want real hard engine braking. You want to just kind of be a light engine braking. And then when you get into crawl mode, you know, you're going to want that engine braking uh, intensified a little bit. So I know everybody has their different four wheel drive setup and their CVT setups, but to me, this is the best one out there. All right, y'all. So just an example here, I'm going to show you how we would set up for this situation. This is actually a dry creek bed so to speak there's not really uh it's not really a creek it's only got water in it when it rains but it can get slippery it can get technical it's a little off camber a little bumpy rocky so what i would do in this situation is i would go over to crawl mode and we're in comfort but i would just put it in comfort for this 
situation right here. If you wanted to, you come over here and put it in four wheel drive. Putting it in four wheel drive is really gonna help you through the obstacles and uh, through the trail. So you just wanna set yourself up for success when you're out on the trail, when you have something like this come up. So we just came down through that uh, dry creek bed there uh, and you'll notice that I'm in high gear. There's a lot of manufacturers out there that you cannot do that in high gear. You will burn the belt up and uh, there's a couple of them that will even come up and say low gear. It will tell you to put your vehicle in low gear. That's one of the cool things about Yamaha is the way their clutch is set up. It adjusts for that. You don't have to go into low gear and with that. Uh, the way the Ultramatic transmission is set up and the clutching, that's what helps with the 10 year belt warranty. That's why they're so confident on that because you just don't wear out belts, you don't blow them out, you don't burn them up. You know, sometimes you come up on things and you don't have time to put it in low gear. Um, so having it be able to go in high gear no matter what, that's a, a lot of confidence there when you're out trail riding. On camera it's hard to tell but this is actually a pretty steep hill climb now you really probably wouldn't need diff lock but we're gonna put it in diff lock just to show you like when this is flashing it's engaging so you might move a little bit and bump it and it engages so there you're engaged in diff lock. Now that's also going to limit your steering because when you have the front locked in, those two tires are both pulling at the same time. So your steering is going to be a little bit tougher, a little bit harder. Um, just not going to have the same steering as you do in four wheel drive, but that's to be expected. And uh, for me, I would rather have it like that because I know that all four tires are biting. So here we go, we're gonna climb this thing. And just to show you how the Ultramatic transmission works and the clutching and how good it is, we're gonna do it in high gear with diff lock. So let's go ahead and shoot on up this thing here. So you'll notice the RPMs, the power, the traction, extremely capable. And we were in high gear and you can hear that we weren't slipping. Uh, it's a game changer. Being able to do something like that in high gear, I can promise you there's a couple other vehicles on the market and a couple other manufacturers that have stuff out. There is no way you're going to do that in high gear. You've got to be in low gear or you're going to burn your belt up. This is uh, by far one of my favorite times to ride and uh, we've actually gotten quite a bit of rain here in Middle Tennessee so our trails are a little bit um, rutted up, whooped out. They're usually uh, groomed a little bit better than this but uh, we've had a lot of rain so 
It makes great video though. It makes great riding. We have had a chance to stretch the legs on this RMX, and I'm gonna tell you right now, this thing gets it. It's a hundred and you know, hundred and a couple horsepower. Uh, it's in that same range as the General. Um, so you're looking at that, you know, anywhere from a hundred to hundred and ten horsepower ballpark range with the the vehicles in this category on the market. And uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, this thing gets it. It does 70 plus miles an hour. Um, I think the highest we had it up to was maybe 75, 76, something like that, somewhere in that ballpark. When you put it in sport mode, there is no lag, it is there. And when you lay it down, it's gone. You know, even people that we were riding with were like, dag on, that thing was like, zip, you were gone. Um, the, another thing, uh, too, is turning radius. You know, this, this vehicle has a good turning radius. Uh, even a Hatfield McCoy, where it's a lot of switchbacks, you, you've got the turning radius that you can do those switchbacks. There's a few other vehicles on the market where you got to kind of do a, a three-point turn. You know, even though it's a four-seater, we didn't have to do that. So that's another thing you want to think about is where are you going to ride? Are you going to have switchbacks? How wide are the trails? Because if you're riding on trails that aren't all that wide and it's a two-way trail, you know, when you have a 72-inch vehicle or, you know, you put aftermarket tires and wheels on it and now it's 74, 76, that's a really wide vehicle uh, to get out and uh, have access on these trails. And you'll notice that I have a, a Sedona trail saw on here with the Sano beadlock. Uh, the the RMAX comes with a different tire and wheel setup. I wanted more of a square tire setup where I could run one tire for a spare. So when we're out on the trail on a trail ride, I can go front or back with one tire. Uh, this setup's a little bit different from factory. Uh, the back tire is a little wider than the front tire. And that's just how Yamaha has it set up. But uh, for us, you know, the square tire setup all the way around is great. This is a 30 inch uh, trail saw. It comes with a 29 inch tire. When you're looking at an RMAX Limited, you got to take into consideration that you're looking at more of a luxury vehicle, more of a trail riding vehicle. It is sporty and it is luxury. Uh, it's not necessarily your utility vehicle. We have a vehicle that's designed for utility that we use, you know, on our property that was straight up just for work. But for us, uh, everything from the creature comforts of it. Uh, for the driver, for the passenger, and uh, that's one of the most important things. Your passenger has to be comfortable, especially if it's your wife. I know for us and uh, for my wife, one of the things she really enjoys is this like grab handle right here, and it's solid. I mean, that thing is, you can adjust it, and it's super solid, and that's something that Yamaha has adapted from their watercraft market, and it, it's, man, I'll tell you, it's just a great fit. Uh, there's a lot of other ones out there. If they even have one of these uh, T-handle grab bars for the passenger, some vehicles don't have that. And it's kind of awkward and it's odd and it's just not very, uh, doesn't do much for your confidence when you don't have something like that to hang on to because there's some situations you get into that you know are gonna be a little rough and rocky and off camber and being able to hang on to that thing, it makes a big difference. Another thing you'll notice here in this vehicle is you've got uh, not just flat floorboards, they're kinda on an angle so your feet are comfortable and you can use your legs to brace yourself. Uh, when you have flat floorboards and you don't have something like that, um, it's, it's just hard on you at the end of the day because you're trying to use your legs to support yourself. The seats in this thing are very cushy. Uh, I, gotta, I gotta give it to them. The seats are just phenomenal. Another thing you'll notice here on uh, the RMAX, um, even on you know, your base RMAX, you have this seat belt set up right here where it's kind of on a bungee you know it, it it gives so that way it's not a lot on your collarbone i know there's a couple vehicles i've been in already that your collarbone is bruised at the end of a hard ride just from that seat belt yanking on you well with this it kind of gives and then also you can move it up and down so you can move this up if you want if you're tall or move it down if you're a little bit shorter and you want that down lower on your shoulder so having the flexibility for that is, um, is pretty cool. And another thing that they do that uh, I don't really see other manufacturers doing is they do it in the rear for the passenger. 
that's big because you want your passengers to have the same experience that you're having. And you'll, uh, you, I mean, it's hard to tell right now because I don't have the seats in, but the seats are elevated a little bit. So you kind of get that stadium seating. So you aren't just looking at the back of this seat in front of you. Um, maybe the passenger gets sick or, you know, they just can't see. So you want the passengers to have a great experience. And then also back here in the back, they have the same style of floorboards. So the passengers can use their legs to help support and brace themselves just like uh, the front passenger does. So uh, it's, it's really kind of all just wanting that great experience for everybody in the vehicle. And something else Yamaha has been doing for, I don't know, a few years, years now, uh, is they put a power port here in the back for 12 volt. And a lot of people didn't even realize it was here because it was black. So now Yamaha has made this gray and they try and educate people on the fact that, you know, you have a 12 volt power outlet here, you just plug it in. And that way you have power back here in the back seat for your passengers. We're just gonna walk right up this here uh, draw and we're just gonna show you kind of how the R-Max is truly like a mountain goat. You never know what four-wheel drive situation you're gonna come up against. So we outfitted our R-Max with a lot of extra accessories. We've got the A-Arm guards front and rear. We've got the front bash plate. We've got the UHMWPE skid underneath. So we've uh, got a little bit of everything. And then if you get into a situation where maybe it's a little bit too much or you got in over your head with the limited, you know, you got the uh, worn VRX 45 winch that you can uh, definitely get out of uh, tight spots with that or some deep mud holes. The R-Max Limited also comes with the Adventure Pro. It's kind of in the dash look, almost like a nav system in your vehicle. Uh, you've got everything from all your temperatures, your RPMs, your gear, your battery. You've got a lot of details on here. And you can also set this screen up to show what drive mode you're in and your suspension. So you can customize the screen. And then also it's a GPS, it's got trails already loaded into it you can track what trail you're on and where you're riding and share it with people you can upload to social media with it it's got a camera in it so the adventure pro has a lot of stuff in it that uh, you know you get with the r max limited there's a lot of things that i really like about the r max and i think when you when you get a vehicle there's there's no perfect vehicle on the market that's just it's just not going to happen there's going to be something here and there that you were like oh i wish it had this i wish it had that uh you'll hear some people they look at this and they're like all these shoulder bolsters get in my way well they actually reduce the size of them compared to say the x2 in 2019 2020 you know they've they've reduced the size of them and they really are here to benefit you if you do have a layover or just kind of help keep you stable when you're cornering or in some really rough rocky stuff uh, it's there for your protection i honestly don't even notice it's there i don't hit it getting in and out i guess if maybe you're a really big person it might touch your shoulder i don't know maybe it'll irritate you a little bit but it does not bother me and uh i know a lot of people that have our maxes and it really doesn't bother them because they're they're kind of just you know just there to help protect you it's just one of those things um, for me, the R-Max Limited fits a lot of my needs. So when you're looking at a side-by-side, -side, you might look at it and say, well, you know, I like this or I like this, um, but it doesn't have this or that. So you want to you wanna find a vehicle that's going to fit your needs, your riding style, and is going to cover as much as possible uh, in your price range and um, maybe within your ability to tow the vehicle because you got to have a trailer big enough you got to have a truck big enough um where you're going to store it uh maintenance are you going to do it yourself or do you have a dealer close by there's a lot of things that goes into buying a vehicle but for me this thing covers a lot of the bases that i look for i look for like i really like the drive mode i like being able to control my my mode of the vehicle 
depending on what trail I'm on, I like being able to change the suspension setting. I didn't think I would really use that. I didn't even know if I would like it. And I love it. I use it all the time. Uh, being able to throw it into diff lock. Uh, I like two wheel drive, four wheel drive, diff lock. I really enjoy that. Uh, you know, you got a stereo in this thing that comes standard. You got your uh, worn winch that comes standard. You got that. You know, you got a, uh, an input down here for your phone. You've got the SSB aux in. You've got a ton of ports that you can put. Uh, there's even some down here that you can put your accessories on. Like here we have uh, LED lights. They're the pod lights. Here we have our roof light. You know, you turn that on. Um, and I like having a gated shifter. I like knowing that I'm in high gear. And I know knowing I'm in low gear. Everything about it, the fit, the finish, the feel, the rubber steering wheel. The touch of the rubber steering wheel is phenomenal. This is by far the best steering wheel on the market. A lot of the ones that are on the market are plastic. They don't feel good. Uh, they're extremely cold in the winter and hot in the summer, but this rubber, it feels like you're in a truck, like, you know, a Ford F-350 Platinum, you know? You've got rubber padding over here for your knees, for your touch points. That, that's something that, you know, is probably overlooked by a lot of people, but when you're on the trail and you got your foot down here in, in the, the foothold where you can kind of brace yourself and you got your knee against that door, at the end of the day, if you do not have that, your knee is going to be sore, and even over here, uh, your, your knee is going to be sore, but you have a pad here and a pad here. And it's also there for the passenger. And another thing that a lot of people talk about and think about when they're looking at a UTV or a side-by-side -side is cab heat. The cab heat in this thing is not even noticeable. We don't notice any cab heat. Matter of fact, what I do a lot of times is I'll get a temperature gun. Like we've been driving for quite a while, all right? That, that firewall is 93 degrees and that's really not even that hot because I don't feel any heat coming off of it. My leg's not touching it. Um, it. It's just all in what you want. Another thing that people take into consideration is noise. I personally don't think this vehicle is very noisy. I don't think it's very loud. I don't think compared to a lot of other vehicles on the market, it's loud. Uh, I just think if you look at, like you check all the boxes, you look at the categories, okay, I want comfort, I want performance, I want rod, I want uh, comfort for my passenger, whatever the boxes you want to check, to me, the RMAX Limited checks all those boxes. There you go, y'all. Thanks a lot for joining us. And uh, I hope this uh, helps you out with making a decision on whether the RMAX 4 Limited is the right side-by-side -side for you. To us, this thing checks all the boxes in the categories that I think would make a great side-by-side -side for anybody out there. As a matter of fact, UTV Action just gave it the UTV of the Year Award. So kudos to Yamaha on that. And uh, thanks a lot for joining us. We appreciate you. Check us out on all the social media outlets. Be sure and hit us with a like and a subscribe. And we'll see y'all next time. Take care. Have a good one.